Good morning, Lion Hearts. Your old pal Jordan the Lion. I had the whole room to myself last night. No other occupants here. And I'm about to get my shower and get dressed. Oh yeah, look at that handsome guy on that shirt. That's me! That's me in Paris. That's right, go to merch5.com. This is a limited edition shirt just while I'm in Paris, so they have a countdown clock. If you want it, go get it, merch5.com. Oh, nice. Check out this statue, this is great. Let's go to the other side and check it out. Oh yeah, nice sculpture. Speaking of sculptures, that's where we're off to now. We're gonna go to the Rodin Museum. There's our ride. All right, we have one train switch over and then we should be right by the Rodin Museum and Napoleon's tomb. There it is. We are definitely in the right place. UZ Rodan, let's go. Well, right off the bat, we've got a scene from Dobie Gillis. That's right, there's the thinker. How cool is that? Yeah, Rodan is one of the greatest artists and sculptors of, well, pretty much all of history. And I did used to watch the reruns of Dobie Gillis, so when I found out this was here, I'm like, I gotta go see the thinker. This is where Dobie and Maynard G. Krebs used to hang out. Now right here is a statue that Rodin did of Balzac. We went to his grave last time we were here in Pierre Lachey as well. Go watch that old vlog if you wanna see his grave and who he's buried next to. That's a kind of a crazy story. Well, there's a little bit more to explore on the outside. You can see they've got little walking courtyards of some of his work in there, but we're gonna go inside now. He actually had a working um, studio and house and everything right outside the city, but we just won't have time to do that on this trip. That's incredible, that was in 1910 he did this one. Wow, take a look at that. What a great job. Now this room is titled his early career. So this is all the early stuff. Beautiful. Most of these were 1870, 1871, 72, 73. And this is St. John the Baptist. Wow, look 
at the look, the expressions of the detail. It's incredible. In this one, can you see the uh, the wreath of grapes around the head? That's kind of cool. And there's Rodan. That's what he looked like. I love this style. He's got things kind of coming out of the, it's like three dimensional. In this case, you can see what looks like an early version of the thinker right there. Sorry, I'm trying to catch this without a ton of glare and reflections. And here's the thinker in bronze, smaller version. Check this out, the sculpture of this horse, that's incredible. This one is called Le Martyr. Now here it says he did a bust of Mozart, and that is right here. That was his chair from the time in the hotel. We get to go upstairs and see what's up there. Well, here is an interesting expression. Look at the expression on his face. A 
And this is a statue of Victor Hugo. This is called the Robe of Balsack. And it definitely looks like a robe, doesn't it? And then right over here we have a pretty much a almost nude bust of Balzac. And then here are a few other works of him depicting Balzac. And then here's one he made of Balzac in his robe. This one is called The Fish Woman. I can see that. This one is called the Sister of Icarus. Look at that. And this is Adam and Eve. You can see. This one's really interesting. If you look at her head, there's a um, there's a sculpture of the Parthenon on top. And this was during his portrait phase. And this is a married couple. This is Mrs. Russell. And Mr. Russell. If you look closely on these, you can see how he created the face. You can see how he would dissect it into quarters. Especially along the forehead, you can see a line going across there and then one that goes down the nose on both of them very lightly. Now this work is also by Rodin, but above it, this is a Renoir. This is called The Nude Female. And they even have a few Van Goghs here, and this is a Van Gogh. Which is kind of cool to be able to show you, because when you go to the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam, there's no photos allowed. Or at least when I went, there wasn't. This is also a Van Gogh, and this one's called View of the Viaduct in Arles, or the Blue Train. You can definitely see a blue train in there, can't you? Also Van Gogh. Now this one is actually a Monet. I'm trying to not get my re reflection in the glass or anything, but it's a little difficult here. This place is huge. So much stuff in here. And then these are two different versions of the same piece. Titled Sleep. That's what it looks like before he covers it. That's a great painting of him. And there's Balzac again. Wow. Take a look at all this. These are all different, like, body parts and things he was working on or experimenting with. Then here's a painting of the thinker by Edward Munch. 
that's beautiful. Great job. Oh yeah, look at that magnificent gold top. Looks like there's a piece of work all the way down at the end of this. Let's go take a look. Check out the rabbit staring at me. So that's what we just walked down to. Now I think we've seen just about enough here. I want to take off and go over and see Napoleon's tomb. I decided to get some food before I took off and got some soup and coffee because Man, jet lag was killing me last night. I got one hour of sleep, so I'm like wearing out already. <laughs> I need a little bit of a pick-me-up. And one last great one to leave on. So now I think I'm gonna walk across the street and go over to that gold dome we looked at. That's actually called the Les Invalids. And that used to be the Church of the King and all of his um, high-ranking soldiers. So there's actually two buildings over there, um, one of which houses the remains of Napoleon Bonaparte. That's some pretty cool architecture right there. Now let's head over to the dome. Oh yeah, look at what's over there. Now inside of here is also the Army Museum and we're not gonna tackle any of that today. We just came to see the Napoleon tomb. Wow, I guess they're serious about keeping people out. Look at that. Wouldn't want to be on the business end of one of those. So the story to this place and how Napoleon ended up here was that uh, probably most of us know that he was defeated at Waterloo. He was one of the greatest rulers and generals um, France has ever known, but he was defeated at Waterloo and then sentenced to exile in Helena. Now, he basically was bored to death out there and um, for a short time when he died, he was buried there. But the King of France was such a big fan of Napoleon and he was so beloved here that they insisted on moving his remains from uh, Helena to here. They dug out the ground inside the church and created his tomb inside there. Now, like I said, there are generals buried here, marshals, and also Napoleon's two brothers, his son, and other various family members. All right, we've made it in. Now, like I said, this was the Church of the King, and this is also where the king could worship with his general. So there was a separate entrance, but they ended up digging out the centerpiece, and this is where Napoleon is buried, right there in that rose marble. Now, one interesting thing that I did hear about this was that when they brought him back, they actually had the general that served under him bring him back. So his remains are inside there. I think it's pretty big too. Interesting tomb as well. Look at all the detail on here. This is great. And then, like I mentioned, Napoleon's two brothers are buried here as well. This is one of them. This is Joseph Napoleon I. This is the, uh, this is the, uh, this is called the Church of St. Augustine, I believe, this section of it. They all have these really incredible domes with this great artwork up there. Now that's an interesting one, look at that. They have statue on top of the sarcophagus with men carrying his body, and his body you can see is right up here. Now if you see behind the crucifix up there, there's a big sheet of glass. That's what divides the two churches. Look at that marble, those marble pillars. Look at that dome. <whistles> no, 
Now I think we can go down here and get a closer look at Napoleon's tomb. Wow. And this is the uh, open crypt. Let's go. So what they ended up doing was putting the history of France all the way around in statuesque depictions up here on the wall. And then there he is. And then right here, you can see that they have the tomb of Napoleon II. Kind of cool to see this. Ever since I saw Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, I've been a big fan of uh, the history of Napoleon, so. So this is the tomb of General Bertrand. And I believe he's the one who went to St. Helena and brought back Napoleon's remains. So now we're gonna go head off and check out the Eiffel Tower. All right, let's hitch a train, huh? Whoa, 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 whoa. Who would throw away Smurfette? Freaking animals. Well, we came up out of the underground train and we're losing the daylight, so by the time we get over to the Eiffel Tower, it's probably gonna be dark, but that's fine. Well, here it is in all its glory. The Great Eiffel Tower. Oh, nice, check it out. They light it up for five minutes every hour on the hour at night. And I just went through security looked up and boom there it was sparkling in all its glory thousands of light bulbs wow i love it so this is what it looks like to be underneath the belly of the beast yep it's a bit of a line i'm sorry guys i didn't mean to tease you but that line is super long and they only have one window open, so we'll come back tomorrow. They do have an interesting bust here of Gustav Eiffel, the man who created this for the World's Fair many, many years ago. Well, I think I'm going to call it a night here. I wanted to thank Scotty Harbin Burnett, Jeff Kidd, and Peter Angelopoulos for making contributions to my channel. And uh, we'll try this again while we're here. We will go up there, just not tonight. Have a great night, my friends. We'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.